want to talk this week about internationalization in anime. Kind of a delicate topic because people get a little confused about the term and what we're talking about and what what actually is, is going on with this. They confuse this with kind of Americanization of anime. Uh, and it's this whole idea of in an anime series, there is a um, there's a process, if you will, uh, or there's a, a thinking wherein the material in the show is made to um, translate as cleanly as possible to other countries. They realize this very early on with anime that if you're going to license some, if you know you want to license something internationally, having all the signs and all the words be in Japanese is less efficient than having it in, in a language like English that many, many more people in the world can understand. Not just America, but you know, a lot of people in France and Germany and, and you know, China and so forth can also read English. So it makes sense to put it in, in, a, in a, a language that is, that is easier to read for more people. So obviously it's not that like every single word in every anime series then becomes um, better than other things, but if the characters hang out at a cafe, and the sign of that cafe out, out front is almost always a word in English, or a set of words in English letters. Well, Latin. The Latin alphabet, technically, right? So, that also gets to some of the aspects of anime um, that might not be portrayed as accurately in anime, um, or aspects of Japanese culture, rather that don't show up in anime as much, like mixed bathing, you know, which doesn't happen that much in Japan, but you, you know, when families go to the bath and little kids come along, typically you know, all the kids go with their mother or their father, and there's mixed bathing. You just don't see that in Japan because, or in anime, because they know that's, that's very unusual in other cultures, so you know, they, they, they try not to push that too much. Well, on the other hand, anime certainly is is not trying to be all cultures, all things to all cultures. You know, there's plenty of Japanese uniqueness in anime. So the question becomes, what effects does this have on anime? You know, when an industry is trying to appeal to the international audience and is then changing the show itself, is that something we should be worried about? Is that a concern? Um, and let's be honest, you know, it's going to happen, right? And this gets into weird subtleties where you know, you're talking about something that happens in the pre-design of the show. You know, no one's coming in and erasing things. Oh, that's another aspect of it is that often if they show a letter, for example, and somebody's written a letter to somebody else, when they show that in the anime series, it is often now put at, an, at such an angle and such that nothing is obscuring it, right? So you just see that page, making it easier for licensors in other parts of the, of, of the world to replace that text with, you know, English or French or German, right? Because that's what the, you know, original Japanese people, they're seeing a letter in their language, so it makes sense, you know, you want to read those words, you want to read those words in, in your language over there. So that is a case where they are technically tweaking the show ahead of time to ensure it's easier to internationalize, but maybe the show would be better if they weren't trying to preserve that. I don't know. Is that something that seems worrying? Is that something that, that seems like something we should we should be concerned about? That a culture is changing itself for other people's um, other people's sake. On the one hand, it's good for us because we get the benefits. But is that sacrificing something in the quality of the show? Yeah, you can't please everybody, and it is very true. E three nine. And that's also part of the, the important point is, you know, they're not changing every aspect of the show or keeping every aspect of the show 
such that it is trivial to to internationalize anything, such that you can replace anything with any word. So they're not trying to please everybody, um, which is good, but they are trying to please a lot of people. So is it better? He said, "Here's an interesting question: Would it be better for?" anime to be completely Japanese to the point where it's hard to translate, to the point where things don't come across, to kind of preserve that Japanese-ness at the expense of people in other countries just not understanding it, right? Where the jokes just don't land, the references don't make sense. And it's like, well, but it's, that's, that's, that's the original thing. Like, how far do you go translating something? classic example of this, this complexity is that you'll have an anime series where they'll make a joke about how somebody can sing you know, um, worse than, and they'll name a current pop idol in Japan that nobody's heard of outside of Japan. And, you know, over when it comes over here in America, it makes a lot more sense to mention a an American pop idol that we all we all know who that is. <laughs> right? That's a case where like the, you know you're trying to make that joke land. Now in this case, you're kind of avoiding that reference in the first place. You're you're making sure that your jokes don't reference those things so that it'll make sense to an international audience. Is that a good idea? I don't know. I think it's a little scary when you're trying to please, when you're trying to genericize something, when you're trying to make something so that anybody can understand it, um, then that tends to, you know, something, when you distill something, you often pull the flavor out. That's the danger. And to be clear, we're not seeing evidence that uh, anime is being distilled to that level. But I, is this a slippery slope? Are we going in that direction? Or can we go in that direction? Or more accurately, um, can this, is it likely this will lead in that direction? Are we anime becoming bland? You're right, Spin to Win. It does not have to be extreme. And it, it isn't. <clears throat> and part of the complexity is that, you know, Japan is a very different culture than other cultures. Um, you know, Japan is more different um, from American culture than English culture is or French culture. It developed in isolation for centuries, near isolation, which makes it just very, very different. And so the references aren't going to land. The references aren't going to make sense. Excuse me. As Game Escape says, I don't mind if they change the signs, but I would hate for anime to give up its cultural specificity in its themes or overall aesthetics. That's a great way of putting it, where there's a difference between the words on a sign and... the pressures of high school in Japan and what folks have to go through in Japanese high school, which isn't true in other cultures, right? You should totally pull from your own culture to tell your own stories. Uh, that's a good point also spin to win is that, you know, different anime target different, different things, right? If you're making um, a high school romantic comedy that is probably aimed more at the um, the domestic high school audience or the adults who are reminiscing about high school life. And so that can be more about specific Japanese culture. Yu-Gi-Oh! does not have to do that. You know, Yu-Gi-Oh! is designed to be a a a thing for many cultures it doesn't have to be uniquely Japanese. 
Amos Cape says, The appeal of anime to me is its foreignness to my everyday experience and culture. Right, and that, and, and I totally agree. The difficulty becomes whether that is in itself a trait that will survive the evolution of the industry. You know, is that uniqueness ultimately detrimental? Where we will never get a significant amount of, you know, what if the industry, um, has a downturn and has these issues with, you know, um, how much, yeah, that's weird, with, uh, keeping, you know, keeping money going and like, they have to appeal to an international audience to get enough money to keep the anime industry, to keep, to keep a significant fraction of the anime industry going. You know, it's not going to completely die, but where, okay, in order to keep 30% of, of, of studios running, we have to internationalize in general, to keep everything going. Or, you know, we have to you know, blend it up for everyone else outside of Japan. Is that a trade-off? Like, like, is that a trade-off that's worth making? That anime suddenly um, is less Japanese, but it survives? Or should we fall on our sword for the uniqueness of, of anime? Is it possible to make art not influenced by your cultural and life experiences? Good point. Um... The question, I, I, th I think, is the extent of that influence. I think culture always influences you, but it is not always relevant to the work at hand. It's not always significant. It is not always significant, and it is not always something that it is, is, um, that translates to significant uh, impact in the, in the work at hand. So, for example, um, Hayao Miyazaki's experiences in Japan as a Japanese person do not dramatically impact the story of Kiki's Delivery Service. You know, that is not a particularly Japanese story. Um, now, obviously, there are, there are little influences there compared to My Neighbor Totoro, which is a much more, much more about the Japanese experience. Um... And even, you know, you can have anime series that are set in Japan that are not so much about, <coughs> that are not dramatically influenced by Japanese culture. And the characters just happen to be in Japan. Um, and others that are. So I think, yes, art, you know, your culture always influences your art, but to various degrees. And it, it can be a very small degree. And you can consciously, um, you can consciously make work that appeal, or that uses very minimal amounts of your culture. You know, we're all connected, and that culture is part of what connects us to varying degrees. But it's not the only influence, right? We're influenced by lots of other things as well. We're influenced by foreign culture all the time. Um, and this gets into the, com the complexities of, you know, a lot of Japanese anime was inspired by Japanese science fiction, a lot of Japanese science fiction was inspired by American science fiction. So there's a character in Ghost in the Shell that is a reference to a very early American science fiction story. Right? So it's weird. And I think it's an anime-only character, actually. Now that I think about it. So yeah, it's... You know, the, uh, the idea of a, a single unified Japanese culture and a single unified Western culture is um, a simplification. It, it's, a, it's naive in, in the, the sense that, see, I'm not trying to be um, 
negative in that term, just, you know, it's, it's not that simple. But we can also acknowledge that Japanese culture is a thing that is not the same as French culture or Chinese culture. So I don't, so it, it's, it's complicated, obviously, because what happens when a, an industry tries to appeal to everybody? Um, I mean, Hollywood's a great example where Hollywood increasingly makes works that are not particularly American, you know, that aren't particularly about, about the American experience. You know, there's not a lot of, there's not a lot of Hollywood that's about small town Southern life. You know, by people growing up in Texas or growing up in, you know, Manhattan. Um, they've gotten away from that into much more generic storytelling. And, I mean, they make money. And that's fine. But a lot of us move towards anime because Western, Western Hollywood storytelling is so generic. Yeah, exactly, Game Escape. When entertainment becomes standardized, it runs the risk of becoming boring. And I think it's a great way of putting it. It doesn't have to become boring when it's standardized. Um, you, you, you have great moments in something that is standardized and, 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 and goes that way. So here's another question. What would cause the anime industry to have to do that? What are the forces working on it that would push it to internationalize? Um, I think certainly if the otaku market in Japan changes dramatically if there's just a trend that that shrinks right and so they're forced to go outside their their home country for 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 money from for fandom that could do it um, also if fandoms in other countries dramatically rise so there's a huge market internationally for things so it's happening in China um, you know a lot of the Japanese companies are now specifically looking to how to break into and other and otherwise expand their Chinese presence because the Chinese government is is increasingly lax about allowing those sorts of works in so you can make a lot of money that way and you can grow your business and, and make profits and hire more, more people and all that good stuff if that happens so that could do it um, changes in the Japanese economy could, you know, could certainly do it. Also, I, as Japan, I think, becomes more, how to put this, um, like right now, it's just so much easier for the Japanese food chain, if you will, to remain Japanese. Because the language itself is such a high barrier, generally speaking, you know, the mangaka and the anime staff and the advertising agencies and everyone involved is a Jap is somebody who speaks Japanese fluently, inserting somebody you know who doesn't know Japanese really gums up the works. So I think as it becomes easier for somebody outside of Japan to become involved in that process, it become a lot easier for um, those other markets to have an impact. You know. For there to be more essentially cross promotional stuff, to be to to do an anime series with other countries. We talked about how there are all these French co-productions with Japanese studios, Mysterious Cities of Gold back in the back in the day, um, all the way up to modern times. Um, Code Lyoko, which I believe is a a French Korean co-production, but lots of these things where it's like you know. Lots of people want animation and want these kinds of stories. And the skills are there, but there are these forces that can push it in, in worrying ways. The Spin to says, I don't know if it's particularly the language, but more due to how Japanese businesses typically hire and promote. I think that's a factor. Right, um, but I think that's also. I mean, the way they hire and promote is also tied into the language, 
right? Like it's hard to get hired at a, at a Japanese company if you can't speak Japanese fluently. You know, name an American mangaka. Name a non-Japanese mangaka. There are one or two, but it's exceedingly rare. And that's just submitting something to, to Shonen Jump, right? You don't have to live in Japan to publish in a Japanese magazine. It's way easier that way, obviously. Um, but you could technically live anywhere and work for a, a Japanese manga magazine, but it doesn't happen. I don't know. And I'm glad we're taking this tack with the conversation that obviously this is not something to freak out about, not something to worry about. There, there's no indications that it's moving in that direction. But it is an interesting thing to think about that, that we're not guaranteed a highly Japan-focused anime industry forever. It could change. It could become more um, bland is perhaps the not the best word to become kind of dumbed down for the international audience if things change dramatically if there's not enough support yeah it's one of the most more difficult arguments because you know who knows we're talking about a thing that is intangible we're talking about a thing that is, is a thought, it's an idea, it's an approach to storytelling uh, and what you do and don't include at the very beginning of the process. It's, it's thought crimes, in a way, where who's to say where the line is, because it's all in people's heads, what they do and don't do with this. And also, granted, it's their choice. But we can sit around here and say, you should keep things more like Japan, but we're not the ones with, you know, trying to pay our bills, they'll pay their bills, rather. We're not trying to, uh, we don't know what their pressures are, we don't know what, what the economics are in Japan. And who, who could say that a more internationalized anime wouldn't be a better thing. Maybe that introduces its own set of positive aspects, and a lot of folks get involved, and maybe that would bring in a lot of interesting new voices into the anime industry. Maybe suddenly you'd get you know, some amazing German artist who starts collaborating with the anime industry, because suddenly now anime can make huge inroads in Germany. You know, or somebody from Latvia, or 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 somewhere in a, or a country in Africa, or whatever. You know, a, some cool Brazilian writer starts working on an anime series. It could be amazing. You know, the whole magical realism thing, um, the, the whole genre is uh, um, very popular in uh, Central America, and it'd be great to see those voices getting involved making animation. Who's to say? Hmm. Right, Stanley. Working on Ultimo. And something else recently, I think. Um, where Stanley collaborated on some um, manga or anime thing. That's a, that's a good point, Spin to Win. I think even with interna internationalization, there's still be interesting stuff being made. This is the other weird thing, is that, I mean, depending on who you ask, right, we're already living in the, the, the apocalypse. We're already living in this world where, oh, it's all controlled by corporations, and, you know, there, there's no interesting fan stuff being made anymore. It, it's all being churned out as manga adaptations. You know, th there's no Gainax anymore. Um, in the sense that the Gainax was early on as this sort of... Um, fan collective that was producing like really intellectually challenging works. Right? Like those days are gone. 
and have been gone for a long time. You could also argue that Gainax was itself a, an exception to the rule. But we all love it. You know, we all find interesting stuff out there. So yes, it's changed. Yes, it's different. But that different might be awesome too. That's a, that, thank you all for those thoughts. I think that'll, that'll wrap it up. That'll wrap that discussion up for now. Like you say, it's hard to, it's hard to come up with firm arguments one way or the other because it is all in one's mind.